hi and welcome to my unicorn bubble. So today's video might turn out to be a little bit dramatic or maybe more dramatic than I want it to be because every time I talk about this uh, I just get wound up um, because uh, the other day um, I nearly had my bag stolen and it just pissed me off a lot because I just don't understand why people have to steal stuff that is not theirs. So. What happened, uh, normally what I do, I leave my bike outside the house, normally I would cover it but, right this was a little bit my fault as well because the only thing I've done is just put this lock on it which I've got two, I've got this clock, I've got a padlock and I've got a chain and I've got a cover which I should really put on every night but I don't because I'm just too lazy so what happened, I just park it outside and I've got a terraced house, I, I live in a terraced house so it's a row of houses and it's a dead end street so there's no cars really coming here or anything but it's quite a narrow street so it's like we've got houses here and then there is cars, parks and there is a pavement across and then there is another house so I thought it was quite a safe situation because why would someone, someone try to steal from a street where there is like loads of houses and loads of people living there so what I've done um, or what I normally do is just park the bike outside the house um, like on the on the pavement across so when I look through the window I can see it um, so what happened uh, this was uh, I can't remember what day it was anyway but it was it was late at night Phil went to work because obviously he works night um, and I was in bed and normally I get a little bit paranoid so I check the window like literally every five minutes if, if my bike is still there so this was about midnight and I was watching telly and I was like right I'm going to sleep now because I was getting a bit tired um, so I thought I'm going to check the bike one more time so I just looked through the window and my bike was parked and right in front of it was this one of my neighbour's car uh, so I couldn't really see it properly but I've seen something moving around it and I thought at first it, w it was a cat because there was like a million cats around here but then I like sort of stood up and I saw somebody with a crowbar trying to get the disc lock off and I was like what? so I stood up, I didn't know what to do at first so, so I like opened the window and I proper shouted like with the bravest voice I could ever pull in my whole life uh, I was like basically just shouted them to go away and f off from the bike so the one the guy uh, it was literally just kneeling down and fucking about with um, with the lock he legged it straight away and then so i just watched him uh, where he was running but i can't really see much from from my window so i could just see basically the direction that he was running to or towards uh, towards the houses there and then all of a sudden this other guy stands up from behind these parked cars here looks at me and shouts bitch and runs away and I was like, well, excuse me, <laughs> why am I the bitch? Like, I'm sorry that I just stopped you from robbing my bike. But then, like, he liked it as well, so they were gone. And then I rang Phil and I told him what's happened. And he was like, you have to go out, you have to go out and put the rest of the locks on. And I was like, I'm not fucking going anywhere. Like, I'm not leaving this house. What if they come back and twat me with a crowbar? And uh, he was like, no, you have to go, but if they come back, you have to put the rest of the locks on. And I was like, right, okay. So I braved it, I FaceTimed him because I didn't want to go alone, even though he wasn't here, but he was still on the phone, right? Um, so I grabbed a chain, put it on my shoulder, grabbed a padlock, <laughs> opened the door, and we kept looking around, so there was no one there, obviously, but it was so quiet and it was a bit foggy as well, like a proper horror movie scene. So I put the chain, I put, no I put the padlock on first, but then because I didn't close the door properly while I was putting the chain on, the cat ran away from the front and then normally I don't let the cat, cat out around the front because he doesn't know where he is so he like, he comes out but he like freezes and looks around and doesn't really know where he is even though he's a cat and I think he should know where he is but anyway, so I had to leave the chain there, grab the cat, put him in a house, close the door, go back to the bike put the chain on properly and I literally just like the inside I was so scared I was shaking and I was I was still on the phone to feel the cat was inside at this point 
and um, I was like, I don't know what to do. I was like, you have to, you have to ring the police. And I was like, what? I never rang the police. I'm not ringing emergency because like they're gone and there is no emergency. So I didn't know like what number to ring. Uh, so I had to Google it, and it's 101 police. I'm pretty sure if it's not an emergency. Uh, it's 101 so I rang them up uh, she took some details of me and all that stuff um, my address and that and then she said she'll she'll be sending a car uh, around here and I was like well I don't know if there's any point because they're already gone and uh, I, I don't know I was just scared that they might come back but the car's not going to be here all night is it so well she said she's going to send um, just a patrol uh, basically to, to have a look around so this was at about uh, one o'clock, half past one maybe, and um, uh, the police knocked on the door about quarter to two, and I was like, oh my god. Uh, so I went downstairs. It was like two uh, two police officers, and um, they started asking me questions like what happened and stuff. Um, so I said basically what happened and what I've seen, and then uh, they were messing around with the crowbar and. Um, from what I could see, they've not done anything to the bike. All they've done is um, my disc lock got bent a little bit, so it's not so like the bit that's meant to be locking, um, like locking the actual lock or locking the disc. Uh, it's bent, so it, it it doesn't touch, so it's not locking anymore. So I can't use it. Um, but uh, they started asking me like, oh, have, they, have they dropped anything and stuff? And I was like, I don't think they had anything. I think the only thing they had was a crowbar and then I don't really understand what would they do with it and where would they go with a bike and how did they expect not to make a noise but I'm guessing because it was quite late, late at night they just didn't expect anyone anyone to wake up or anything but well anyway so uh, and they asked me the, the police officers they asked me for a description and I was like have you ever seen a bike thief or any thief like the, they, they won't they won't come in like half naked so you can describe them and all that stuff and I was like it was definitely kids like around well maybe not maybe not kids but quite young people maybe in their 20s tall and skinny and dressed in black trackies and their faces were covered like what the description do you, do you want me to give you and I know they're like a bit like towards the houses like the estate that's around here that's all and also they said oh you know we've got uh, we've got cars cruising around and I was like right well Thanks. <laughs> it was an emergency, so I'm glad they came around because, like, it calmed me down a little bit. But I couldn't sleep properly. I had to go to work the next day, so I went to sleep at about three o'clock. But I kept constantly looking, looking through the window, and then where, where I would normally um, keep my, or where I could keep my bike, I've got a backyard, um, and the gate locks. But because it's a terrace house, and, and the back alleyway is like separated from the houses. Um, like from the the next street, it, there's a fence and trees and everything, and there's not one light in the back. So if my bike was there, I heard a noise. There is no way in this world that I would go outside and have a look who's there because you can't see literally nothing, not even behind the house. So I've not got like a, a light or anything in there. So uh, I don't keep my bike there. I'd rather have it like outside on the street so I can actually see what's going on. So when somebody tries to nick it, like the other day, then. I, c I can actually see what's going on uh, so I told him that's just uh, where I normally keep it but I should have kept it covered with, with all the locks so I know it's my fault but I just don't understand why why people have to steal stuff and why can't oh, I do understand that they want it for like before Christmas they want it for money and then sell it and then drugs and all that stuff but I don't understand where are the parents like where, where, where are your parents like you're like 16 or maybe 20 or something and you should be at home in a bed not stealing my bike I wish I was a little bit braver <clears throat> and I wish I was like I don't know wish, wish I had I don't know ran out or something but yeah I don't want to get attacked by a crowbar by some idiots that they don't really care clearly what, what's what's gonna happen to them so oh my god anyway so I gave the details to um to the police that I had got I got um like a case reference number and stuff and then they just said if anything else happens uh, to let them know so I was like well okay so touch wood um touch wood nothing nothing's happened 
since, but the other day uh, we were we were on the way to Ruby, like we normally do every week or every other week, uh, and we went on a motorway. Uh, and as we were going, my bike just cut off, so like it started stuttering, like coughing a little bit, like as if I was running out of petrol, but I wasn't because I was on like 114 miles or something. Normally it does about 135. Uh, so I moved on to I was in the middle lane, so I moved on to the left lane, and then it just it just cut, so I had to go onto the heart shoulder, parked up, and Phil was in front of me, but he didn't really notice until he was like over the bridge um, <laughs> that I wasn't behind him anymore. So I was just sat there. Obviously, I pulled over um, over to to the side of the motorway and rang him so he's got this little bluetooth thing that connects to your phone and then when I ring him he can just pick it up so I told him what happened excuse me I told him what happened but he was uh, quite far away so he had to go down to I don't know what junction whatever it was there he had to turn around go all the way back all the way back to Eccles so he could turn around there and come back for me so I was sat on the side of the motorway for like 25 minutes like a little stupid mushroom with my pink hat but one car, this guy, oh bless him, thank you whoever you are, uh, he pulled over and he was like, oh what happened to you? So I explained, explained to him what happened and then he literally done the same what, what I've done, tried to, tried to start, I did a kill switch and all that stuff and, and then he realised he can't help me and was like, oh I'm living around the corner here but how do we get you there? And I was like, well it's okay, my boyfriend is coming now and he was like, oh I can't really help you and I was like... <laughs> Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for stopping anyway. So, well, at least he asked if I was alright and all that stuff. So, that was very nice of him. So, for the next 25 minutes, I was just sat there, like, waiting for Phil to turn up. And then, uh, when he finally got there, we managed to bump start it. <laughs> Never got to Rue. Just turned around, went to his mum's, uh, stayed the night over there. And then, Monday morning, oh, yeah, this was Sunday. And then, Monday. Monday morning, basically, we took it to the garage. It died on the way there as well, so it. I don't. I don't want to say broke down, but it just broke, broke down. <laughs> it basically stopped. It completely cut out. So I don't know if it's a battery. On the way there, I was thinking it might have been a petrol as well, because I switched the petrol onto reserve, and it was sort of okay. But again, it, it just got bumped started, so I don't really know what, what's up with it. But. Um, Craig from the shop just said that it might be the cam chain, so I'll find that out tomorrow probably what's wrong with it, so perfect before Christmas anyway. But um, I was going to keep it inside, I was going to put it in, in the living room uh, for winter anyway because it's getting really cold. I think I'm just getting pretty, I don't want to say old, but just a little bit comfy. Last year um, I rode all the way through the winter, the only the only two, week I didn't, two weeks I didn't ride on my 125. Uh, was when it was freezing because it was slippery outside and uh, I just I didn't want to risk it so I put it in the living room, kept it there for two weeks and then uh, just rode it all the way through. Uh, I rode it all the way through up until obviously now because it's in a garage uh, and I will still ride it if it's okay which hopefully it is. Hopefully it's just me being stupid and I just ran out of petrol or something, I don't know, we'll see. Or if it's not that, hopefully it's fixable because I love my bike and um, I can I can ride it again. I miss I miss miss um, I miss riding it. I have to walk to work now, and I'd rather not. <laughs> so, and regarding the the, the two guys um, that tried to that tried to steal the bike, uh, I spoke to some of my colleagues at work, and one of them said that there was like a suspicious activity around her house as well, around like basically uh, around the place where she lives, and she said there was um, about four people like looking around the houses and stuff, and there were some robberies as well. So, just be careful. Make sure you lock your stuff up. Don't leave anything in your cars. Don't leave your bikes unattended on unlocked and just covered them and put all the locks that you can find on them um, to if not prevent at least slow them down so you have time to ring the police or or just stop them yourself if you're a bit braver than me um, so I think I think people some people just don't care and they, they will go for anything the, the, the robberies and the the bike theft are just so common now, like all, all the stuff that I see on Facebook, it just scares me and winds me up, like I don't understand why are people like that still there, like why can't we just not even lock them up, but 
why can't we? It's not yours, so don't touch it. End off. Oh. I don't know, it just reminds me of that you have to you have to be constantly stressed, like you can't sleep or whatever because I've not got a garage so I've not got I've got nowhere else to put it. Uh, and I know it's there like inviting people but it's not inviting like normal people that don't steal, right? So I don't know. Anyway, um I think that's pretty much it from the story. So thank you very much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!